let your seed be choked. A certain gentleman said to me that I'm not knowledgeable in architecture, I'm not knowledgeable in mathematics, I'm not knowledgeable in medicine like many pastors are. <laughs> and I reply, I will never come and argue about medicine with a doctor. I will never come and argue architecture with an architect. I will never come and argue mathematics. I, I was okay at math, but to get a degree in math, another level. And I respect that. But when it comes to scriptures, I want to see a superior argument. I want to see a superior revelation. You cannot disqualify me scripturally with mathematics. Because if you try to disqualify a fish using tree climbing, the fish will be absolutely hopeless. But that same fish, put it in some water. Baptize that fish with some water and you will see its ability come to life. You cannot discredit my scriptural understanding and my revelations that came from God because you have a PhD and I have a BSc. Peter was not really educated. Paul was very educated. Paul could not discredit Peter. Peter could not discredit Paul. They both contributed to what we have today as the gospel. If Paul had come and said, this fisherman, what does he even know? We will never have had the wholesomeness of the gospel we have today. So if you feel that my position on a certain subject is faulty, bring a scriptural argument. Not just a scriptural argument, a superior scriptural argument. Matthew chapter 4, Satan said, quoted Psalm 91, jump, let his angels catch you, and Christ repeat, uh, Christ retorted with a superior scriptural argument. Do not test the Lord, the scriptures say. Christ did not say, do you know who I am? Do you know who my father is? Did you check my bank account? Do you know how wealthy I am? No, sir. If Daddy Freeze brings forward a scriptural argument, counter it scripturally. And the friends I have who are preachers of the gospel know me for that. I respect their scriptural arguments. I don't buy all of them, but I respect them. And they respect mine. They don't buy all of them. They don't subscribe to all of them. But they hear it and they know that, okay, this is coming from a place of revelation. Or this is coming from a place of knowledge. It is futile to try to discredit a revelation or a scriptural argument with emotions. Because that just makes Christ a carpenter. Compared to Peter, Christ was nothing. Sorry, compared to Paul, Christ was nothing. If we resume, what was his resume? He had a ministry for three years. Is that resume? He was a carpenter. Paul was a scholar from birth. So if you want to discredit the ministry of Christ, you have to come with a very superior argument. And that was where the Pharisees failed. So at the end of the day, they resorted to all sorts of things. I, for one, have never feared curses in my life. The, the, the grace upon my life, the anointing, the revelation is to focus. I want to do things in the right way. But people in your mind, anybody cursing me, I beg you in the name of Yahweh, continue cursing me. Continue, I beg you. If you think that I'm afraid of curses, I ask you today to curse me more. The path blazed ahead of me is not blazed by humans. And when I get revelations that are scriptural, because 
The true test of revelation is, is it like what the scriptures say? I ask myself of my gospel every time. If I bumped into Apostle Paul, if Apostle Paul resurrected, and I was taking a walk in the park, and I bumped in there, I say, hey, hello, young man. They say you are a preacher of the gospel. What is this your gospel? I should be able to preach a gospel Paul understands. And Paul said, hmm, okay. That sounds like what we used to preach those days. But when you preach a gospel that Paul or Peter would be struggling to understand where you are coming from, will be wondering which God are you talking about, would be amazed to, to ask, is, is this Christ as, as in like Yeshua? Then you know that your gospel needs fine tuning. Any gospel that sounds strange to the ears of Mary Magdalene, any gospel that sounds strange to the, to the ears of James or Peter or Paul is a gospel that is worrying. So when you get a revelation, it must be done according to the Acts of the Apostles. And when you're doing something contrary to what's going on in the Acts of the Apostles, it must be because you're following Christ directly. But no human can evolve a contrary gospel. You can continue in a path. You can't create a new path and, and trace it back to Christ. It doesn't work like that. It has to be built on Christ, not built somewhere else. And then you stand there and point it. That's our guy, Christ. No, I'm sorry about that. You've got to build a Christian gospel in Christ. And that is why we are the free nation in Christ. We're not a, a church. We are a bunch of Christians living in a spiritual nation as described by 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 5 and the nation is geographically located inside the body. Look at somebody beside you and tell them inside the body. If you take the body of Christ, you can draw a map on it and say this is where the free nation is because our geographical location is in the body. 